Manling Williams was sentenced to death in California. She's like one of the few f-ing women that are we got sentenced to death. She was sentenced to death in 2012. So I believe that Manling is still alive. This better not be upsetting. Oh, put your earmuffs on, Casio. No Googlers. Because <clears throat> I'm going to get to the point on this one really quick. So let's go back to 20, 2011. Or I'm sorry, no, her sentencing was 2020. So, or 2012. So these actually happened I, 2007. So rewind just a little bit before 2007. We're in 2006, okay? So Manling Williams and then her husband, Neil Williams, they're both 25, 26, 27 years old, kind of a few years into their marriage. They've got two sons and they appear to be pretty happy. People said that Manling was very kind, very generous, kind of nice, kept to herself, but like she could be a little unstable sometimes. People are like, yeah, it gives her a little fire, you know, she likes to party, whatever. But Manling is in this relationship with Neil and she starts to get bored. Just some bored housewife, shit, which is nuts because at the time, this was like 27, 26, okay? She's already tired of the home life. She's tired of her children. People said that she even started kind of distancing herself from her kids and her husband. So Manling wants her freedom and she decided to get a job somewhere else and then ask her husband to stay at home. And then she'll go out into the world and work. For some reason, this felt like more freedom to her, to knowing that her husband was like staying there and she was out and about. She gets a job waitressing and then he gets a job as an insurance broker. But being an insurance broker is a really hard job. You're basically a salesman selling something really expensive that a lot of people don't always need. In order to be good at that job, you've gotta be incredibly charismatic, you've gotta be incredibly determined. And unfortunately, Neil, wasn't really. He loved being a stay-at-home dad. He liked taking care of his sons. He was very, very focused on his sons. And I believe that was even a point of contention because when the financial trouble hit in the relationship, it was all, you're just taking care of the kids. And it's like, well, fucking duh, bitch. So Manling tells him that she wants to get a divorce. And Neil's like, no, 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 we can't, we can't do this. He's like, I grew up in a single parent home. I'm not letting my children, you know, go through a divorce or have to live with one parent or alternate between the two. Please, please stay with me. Like, he's a really, really nice guy. He's like, please, please. And he begs her. And then she eventually is like, okay, fine. But as you guys may have guessed, Man Ling is a pretty big bitch. So she decides to go online on Facebook and she starts talking to kind of an old fling. This isn't really, it's someone that some people say like, oh yeah, I think they kind of dated, but it was for like a week or two weeks. Really what this was, was Manling was obsessed with this guy from when she was in high school and she ended up marrying someone else and pretty much always thinking about him. So she keeps talking to this guy and things heat up pretty quickly. So much so that within a week, Manling has booked a trip to Santa Barbara to go spend the weekend with this guy. And on top of that, something that really speaks to how callous this woman is, is she asked her husband's mother, her mother-in-law, to watch the boys while she was out cheating on her son. So Manling goes out, she has this affair, she has this beautiful weekend, she's just in love, intoxicated. She comes home and just wants nothing to do with the kids, nothing to do with her husband. She's just like, you guys have dinner, I'm upstairs, I'm working, I'm doing this, I'm partying. And everyone like picks up on this, but Neil is so determined to keep the family together, he's like, whatever she wants, like whatever she wants to do, just, it's, it's fucking fine. So the affair continues. Uh, until the second or third time that Manling and this guy meet up and he basically says to her, Look, bitch, I don't want to be the other man. And I feel bad because you have a husband and kids and, you know, we've already met up twice and you're talking about seeing me like the next week. You know, for guy, think about it. Guy, you know, guys, actually, no, I was going to do a thing, but never mind. 
for, for a lot of men, like, I'm not going to, you know, you're not going to keep messing around with somebody that's got a wife and kids. It just sounds like a fucking mess. And then you feel like the other man. And so he was just like, I'm out. Like, count me out. And this absolutely destroys Manling's world. I, I think that she had some kind of like addiction or just like, in, like just complete infatuation with this guy from high school because she never could have him before. And now here he is. And when he breaks it off with her, she is absolutely destroyed because he said the absolute worst thing that he could have said to Man Ling. And he basically told her, I can't be with you because of your husband and children. So they break it off. And she goes home and she's absolutely stewing. Because at this point, she's kind of had a taste of freedom. She knows she doesn't want the kids in marriage anymore. And she's blaming them for everything. And she's fucking pissed. So <clears throat> Manling, one night after her kids go to sleep and her husband goes to sleep, her two sons, she goes upstairs to her youngest son. Um, who's three years old and she takes a pillow and she smothers her son and I think we've talked about this before um, it takes a very long time to smother somebody it can take five six seven minutes holding a pillow over your fucking child's head at any point you could stop but not only was she determined to kill her three-year-old child and rid herself of this life she then went upstairs to her seven-year-old son's room and did the same exact thing. But of course, Manling's not done yet. She's not free. This is really interesting because a little bit before, she had actually started laying the seeds to other people. She had told friends that she had woken up at night. This is a week before she had killed her two sons. She had told friends that she was waking up at night and she had this horrible dream that her husband had killed her two sons and then killed himself. I think she was laying the groundwork for her alibi. She was talking about what she was going to do. Because now back to the present day, after Menling smothered her two boys, seven and three years old, she went upstairs to her sleeping husband and looked at his sword collection. This was something that Manling was really upset about Neil's obsession with samurai swords. He loved collecting them. He put them up on the walls. He was always polishing his swords. He spent so much money on them that they didn't really have. So Manling fucking hated these swords. And she looks up on the wall and she grabs the biggest sword in his collection. And while Neil is sleeping, she strikes him. Just straight up just straight down slices him and she does it again and she does it again and he tries to escape when they actually found neil's body he was crawling to his boy's room who he didn't know they were already dead but he was going to go protect them people think um man Ling didn't stop until she had sliced her husband with a samurai sword 97 times that says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. This is extreme anger, internalization, blame. 97 times. She had absolutely hacked this man up. So if that's not shocking enough to you guys, what she does after is she goes into the bathroom, she gets ready, puts her makeup on, does her hair, blow dry in her hair, getting ready to go out for the night because Man Ling needs an alibi. And on top of that, she wants to celebrate her newfound freedom. She goes out to the bar that night with a couple friends, co-workers. They're out late at night. They have a couple of drinks. And then she comes home at 4 a.m. to put her fucking performance on. She gets there, discovers the bodies, calls the police. My God, I would love to get that tape. I was looking for that shit. Calls the police, and I'm not sure what all she said, but the police arrived, and they see the crime scene. And Man Ling fucking asks investigators, Are my husband and son okay? 
And to detectives, they're like, well, bitch, if you had walked in, which apparently you did because you called us, you would know that your husband is not okay. Neither are your sons. So this is like a really weird question for her to ask. And when she asks this, they raise an eyebrow, but they deliver the news to her that they've, they've been killed. And she, ah, like, I mean, dude, not even Dia DiPolito status. She's just, ah, they said that she knocked over a trash can dramatically and fell to the ground and starts dry heaving and crying. No tears coming out, no puke, no nothing, you know, whatever. And they go to take her in for questioning and then they, they take her items. In her possession, was her box of cigarettes, which had her husband's blood all over them. Before she called investigators, she went out to smoke a cigarette. The cigarette butt that was outside of the apartment or the outside of the house had his blood on it, as well as the pack of cigarettes that she had on her. There was no way to explain how the blood got there. There was no way. If she had never seen the bodies, if she had never, you know, like that whole performance, th that shit fucked her up because she's acting like she'd never seen the bodies. So then she couldn't explain away the blood. Um, Manling confessed pretty quickly. I don't even think that she had counsel. And this was a pretty open and shut case. The, I just wish there were so, I wish there were more assets for it because um, yeah, this shit's really crazy. I wanna show you guys, hold on, we got some photos on Murderpedia. Let's, I'll show you guys Neil really quick. So this is Man Ling. I gotta be careful with Murderpedia because y'all know Murderpedia be showing some crazy shit. <laughs> Wait, one in chat, have you ever gone to Murderpedia to look up something and you're like, oh, photos, I wanna see what they look like. And it's just like dead bodies. Uh -uh. Why did she do it? Because she wanted, she wanted to be out of her marriage. That's basically it. She just wanted to be out of her marriage. So this is, this is Neil. <sighs> this is Neil and they're boys. Oh my God, they're so young. They're just babies. And he fucking loved them so much. Dude, yeah, she, yeah, does she not know there's such thing as divorce? You know, Charmed, what I find is, uh, this is, guys, this is the female Chris Watts. Having an affair, wants to get out of the relationship, can't put their foot down, down on a divorce, doesn't know how to communicate, doesn't want to handle all the bad feelings of confrontation. So they're like, I'll just kill you. But also she clearly hated him or blamed him for the affair ending. Christina Watts, fucking literally. Dude, I've thought about this case a lot. This one really fucked me up. Um, I, yeah, it was, it was just like insane. I've never heard of any murder like that. 